You know, I really like Shinra. He's a fantastic character, great design, great abilities, great fighting style, and he believes in true equality. Before we open this discussion on Shinra and how great I think he is, please tell me your own thoughts on Shinra in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Now, let's get into it. What's up guys, I got the pencil here and here we are to discuss Shinra and how great I think he is. Because I do think Shinra is a fantastic character overall and this is coming off of like... A person who, before reading Fire Force, had a very, like, disinterested view on Shinra. I sort of like Black Clovered Fire Force accidentally. Like, I had heard a lot about it, I would seen a lot about it, but I was like, eh, I'm never gonna read it. And then I saw Shinra, like, slam his foot into a dude's head, and I was like, gosh, darn, I gotta read this now. So I went and read it. And it gave me one of my favorite main characters out of a lot of series for a while. That's mainly because of how, like real he feels how human he feels but we'll get into that in a little bit but first before you hop into any discussion on shinra too deep spoilers for everything like the whole manga i'm caught all the way up and thus i will be spoiling anything and everything some spoilers will be complete random i will not even intend to mention them and they will be mentioned so if you do not want to be spoiled on the manga of fire force you can dip out of here i'm just gonna be talking about everything so i don't know where the anime ends i didn't watch the anime so uh Manga spoilers all over this bad boy. So let's get right into it. So why do I like Shimmer so much? Well, number one, let's just get the main thing out of the way. His design is really simple, yet I like it a lot. The sharp teeth have an extra bit of detail that you don't really see on main characters in particular, or at least not main characters who are portrayed in like a purely idealistic light, and I think it works very well for him. Also, the short chopped hair, like the way that a lot of anime characters are drawn, or at least a lot of anime main characters are drawn, usually like the hair is much longer, puffier, like it's, it takes up a lot more of their design than you initially think. Look at your characters like Midoriya, look at your characters like Tanjiro, look at your characters like Goku, look at your characters like even Naruto to a degree. They have really long hair. Well, or relatively long hair compared to the rest of the design. It's a big focal point, but Shiro's hair is very cut back. It sort of feeds into what his character is like, a sort of cut back, but on the offense. Like, it's there, and it's important, just like Shinra is. It's a very, like, weird way that the mangaka managed to tie his design into his character. And honestly, I really do like the fact that despite being one of the strongest characters in the show, he's not really that big. Like, sure, he's muscular, but he's not this massive dude. He's just a kind of slim guy who can kick you really hard. And that's really, really cool to me. I like that. But speaking of other things I like, I like his fighting style. Kicking is very uncommon. Like, you usually see punching. But the way that Shinra fights with all breakdance, like... This isn't the first time I've seen a breakdancing fighting style. I know I've seen it other places. I can't tell you off the top of the dome right now because my brain's blanking right now. However, I know I haven't seen this style. No, I know I have seen this style in other places. But the way Shinra does it is so much fun because of how he adds the fire to it. He essentially extends his range way beyond what it should be by using the fire while still having a primarily kick-based moveset. And I don't know, I really like kicking as a combat style. So to see a character fully dedicate themselves to it, seeing a character fully dedicate themselves to a more ground-based low, but that's the thing, he can have a ground-based style with the breakdancing, but at the same time he can perform those same motions in the air, which he uses to advantage in a lot of his fights. So I really like his fighting style, I think is one of the coolest, honestly, in the series, mainly just because kicking is cool i don't know for some reason that may be a bias i know a lot of people like punching but i'm more of a kicking man myself that's probably why i like certain other things in other series that also have a lot of kicking but regardless of that i think his fighting style is super cool i love how his abilities sort of like grow and develop as the manga goes on like he starts off with your basic fire propulsion then he grows to get the sharp ends with hysterical strength then he grows to get blue flames then he grows to even go faster and stronger he can start manipulating his flames even better like he's slowly developing throughout the series his power growth despite being linear is like one of the most interesting things to follow about him because it sort of matches his own development and understanding in the world the more he learns the more he develops the more he grows the stronger he grows as a fighter as well it's a great linear power progression that matches along with his character progression i think that's really really good to have for a character like shinra who is our main character and who we're following throughout it's good to make his power line up with the plot and with the character so it's really great to see on the power progression standpoint then for shinra as simply a menace He's great, at least in terms of fights, because the thing is, the way Shinra is normally characterized is something along the lines of a hothead who doesn't think in battle and just runs in, quick thinking, no, who cares, I'm just going to react very, very well. But actually, Shinra is one of the most, like, tactical MCs I've seen. Like, he literally will take the time to, like, think on what he's seen of his opponents. One of my favorite instances of this is his fight with Karen, where he's like, 
taking into account all the details when he walks he explodes when they there are different movements but he notices the gaps and things like karen walks without exploding like there are things where he can do that sh another main character typically wouldn't like shinra will literally break down and analyze something and be like hmm you know what if i tried that like the way that he's able to break down fights when he's not winning is great the way he's able to strategize in the middle of a fight even before he gets even more powers like in his initial fight with Rekka, when he is forced to fight someone who is probably his superior this was a lieutenant level fighter that he was afraid of before he realizes that wait a minute i can take advantage of my mobility and drag this dude into the air and make it so that he can't fight as effectively he's always thinking on how to improve a situation or how to solve a situation he's not just gonna consistently he does it occasionally i will admit sometimes he will just throw more power at something but a lot of the time he's willing to think it out he's willing to outmaneuver he's willing to use his unique fighting style use his unique attributes to his advantage against his own opponent's unique attributes and i love seeing that and even the times where he does just go super hard into i gotta be faster i gotta be speedier it usually ties into a good character mode for him like when his fight against show when he needs to get more power get faster get stronger just to catch his little brother he still goes on to rectify that with the character interaction there like he, the reason he's not out thinking and trying to like truly defeat his little brother is because it's his little brother he doesn't want to actually hurt him he, he literally he says the entire fight he's just playing tag with him like the dude loves the little guy too much so he's not gonna actually try and hurt him he's not gonna try and strategically outmaneuver him to take him down violently it's not what he does and i love that like the way that the character is allowed to strategize in fights but at the same time you can still have your traditional moments where he does need more power and the, one of the other things i love is shinra is unafraid to take advantage of anything that's taught to him or he's just willing to straight up steal things like the fact that he formed an adala link just off of his interaction with show he's like wait a minute so beings from Adala or with properties from Adala, they can lend me power in order to get me the light speed. So to do that, all I need to do is ring up this being from Adala that's nearby. And then I use, like the fight against the Demon Infernal in the Chinese Peninsula arc is literally Shinra taking everything he's learned up to that point. The fact that he can access light speed, the fact that he can get ant from Adala, the fact that he can stop a being like this with only a certain amount of force, all that stacks onto the revelation of that fight and the resolution of that fight where he can use being so adult to amp himself and then destroy like shinra is allowed to think a lot and i think that's cool i know it's a weird thing to mention like oh well aren't all characters allowed to think yeah but we're allowed into shinra's mind and headspace more on how he's thinking why he's thinking and it leads to a lot more dynamic fights despite his real only superpower being he can kick you with fire the things he can do with that kick and fire is pretty darn impressive. I love how tactical Shinra is. And the thing is, you may think it stands in contrast with his characterization, but it honestly kind of makes sense. He His planning, while good and well detailed and thought out, it's based on years and years of combat experience, combat training. So he is hot-headed, he still is the same character, and he still executes that way. Like when he was fighting Karen, he still just kept trying to figure out, like, okay, so if he's attacking, he can't absorb because it's a different kind of force. Let me just keep attacking him until I get it right. He's still allowed to have those moments where he's still Shinra Kusakabe fully while using more tactical elements we get to see those tactical elements i think it's great i think it's smacking i love that but then to get on to the next thing i like about shinra's character is his humanity and what do i mean by that main characters are typically just meant to be simples or as shinra wants to be himself a hero he's not necessarily allowed to say anything too dark or well no in general main characters aren't necessarily allowed to say things too dark or like too evil or they're not supposed to like do anything like too violent but like shinra instantly goes to bro i'm gonna kill you like so when he is dealing with inka a character who is meant to be i'm definitely gonna talk about inka in her own video because wow but the thing is when he's talking to inka after he realizes that wait she's really just gonna go because she wants to die he's like not only does he ask what is actually wrong with you which is like it's a question that you the reader are asking but like shinra has such a realistic perspective that being in the situation himself he's like what is wrong with you but then once he realizes that inka's gonna go and just cause more trouble for people and that after all this time she really is just like an empty person who just cares about living life on the edge and doesn't care about the suffering and pain of others including herself he's literally like yo i'm gonna kill you you are a whole menace you are a threat to society and i need to remove you like i love stuff like that where our main character is sort of allowed to just have real reactions to things because to be fair she was a menace in that moment and she needed to go though and at the same time you can definitely understand another aspect of the humanity where shinra is a firefighter 
or a special force firefighter, and thus that means he needs to take out Infernals. Shinra fully acknowledges the fact that these Infernals were people. These were actual human beings that he needs to stop to protect other human beings. And he lives with that. It's a sad part of his life that he has to deal with, that he has to push onward from. And he is like, it's the amount of things that he has to take in stride and keep moving just to be himself. Like, that's like the divide. Like, when he is still the superhuman top tier will of a character, like, I will do what I can no matter what to be a hero to save the people, even if they don't want me to. While that is still the inspiring part about him, it's the human nature, how he has limits, how he still has those human connections through other characters like Show, how he still cares about his friends, his new family, like all the extra human spice that's dribbled in there. That makes me really enjoy Shinra, it really makes me think he's great. From the moments that Shinra is an absolute perfect paragon of humanity, like I am literally the savior, I'm gonna come and absolve you of all your troubles, and horrible misgivings like he is apparently supposed to be at the same time he still has those moments where he gets angry where he makes dumb decisions for the fact that he simply wants to save his little brother from the fact where he literally says he's gonna kill somebody because they've gotten on his nerves so badly and to the point that they're actually becoming a threat to other people i love that and another thing that i love is that shinra loses like a lot like the dude catches some fat l's consistently and sure he usually gets the run back like to be fair he lost to karen like, there was nothing he could do against Karen. Like, sure, he figured out the one weakness. If he attacks back, then bada bing, bada boom, you're stuck out of the room. Karen will take damage. But Karen instantly just flipped the script on him and was like, okay, I just won't attack you then. What's the plan now, buddy? And Shimon was like, oh, you right. And then he lost that fight. Like, there, there are times where a main character, or characters in general, will just be like, huh. I'll let you live this time. Huh. I'll get you next time. Or like, oh, I wasn't at my full power. No, Shinra had the answer. He just didn't know how to execute it because his enemy also had the answer. It was like, it's some of the weird things for me that really make me like things like that. Like when a character is allowed, especially a main character, is allowed to lose as hard as Shinra loses. He lost to Karen. He lost Sho. He lost the world. Like there's, he is literally constantly playing a game of catch up because of how many times he is forced to just Boom, he gets a knocked down by the world so often. And speaking of getting knocked down by the world, his backstory is great. And that's because it's a backstory that actually ties into Shinra's modern world and his perceptions and how he is viewed in the eyes of the world and how the world has sort of built this narrative around him that he really can't do much about outside of trying to become a hero to prove them wrong. It's like the, it's the little things, the little dibble dabbles of spice that make me go, yeah. This is some top tier mess right here. Like, I enjoy it, mainly because of the fact how Shinra is portrayed as this monster. Like, he's this inhuman person who murdered his own family in a fire, and he smiles about it. People never go into the possible trauma that could have come from that event. People never consider the fact that it could have been something else. People never even gave him a chance. He was just marked as this demon, this monster that no one could ever reconcile with. And the way that affects him and the way that it characterizes him to go even harder into being a hero is great. The way that the mystery around that entire scenario is built up throughout the narrative is fantastic. Because first, you think everyone's dead. But then you find out Sho is still alive. And in fact, he's one of the most powerful characters around there. But you didn't know that. The way that the mother is actually a demon infernal who was the one who burned the house down. Like, there's so many things about his backstory that make it more complicated for him as a character. That just, it's great. It, like, despite being so long ago, like literally over a decade ago by the time of the modern narrative, it's still so impactful because it sort of like ties into the modern problems of the world because this leads into the whole pillar incident. This leans into the concept of demon infernals at all. It like does so much despite how it's, it's weird because the backstory is rather in depth, but it doesn't feel like there's this is weird, right? Like it feels like a Naruto S backstory where like it was a problem, but where Naruto sort of got his redemption around the pain arc when he saved the village and people finally realized the vessel of the nine tails could do some good and like it sort of ended there. People stopped hating him. Shinra's hate literally led to him being captured and starting the Adala event because he saved people, but due to the false perception of the world of both him as a character on his own and to the way the world had been twisted up to that point ended up leading to his loss. I love that. It's the little extra ticks that the mangaka gives Shinra that like he has the baseline. Now, like if you put Shinra in a vacuum and just look at what he is, 
a main character who wants to be a hero. Like, if I were to tell you what Shinra wanted to be, his main goal, his main motivation, he's a hero that wants to avenge his family. Sounds super basic, right? But it's when you add those little extra spices, those little extra details. Like, say you're mixing a pot of food up, right? You can just cook the meat. Like, you can have just a regular chicken, just a regular piece of chicken. But it's when you add the seasoning, add the salt, add the spice, add the flavor to it. That's when it starts to get more developed. And that's what I think Shinra is. Like, he is this basic concept, like the savior, but it's twisted. It's evolved. It's changed. It has so much good stuff behind it. I usually don't like characters who are meant to be the savior of everything. But instead of a character being the savior of everything that's suddenly praised and lauded and t suddenly they get this whole party of people, Shinra was considered the worst of the worst or something he couldn't control. And despite him being the savior of everyone, no one wants him as the savior because of the things outside of his control and how that feeds into his <sighs> Shinra's spicy. He's great. I love it. I think Shinra all around, from his character design, to his character abilities, to his fighting style, to his fighting capabilities, to his character, to his backstory, everything about Shinra is great. And I think every single bit about him is only one of, well, not only one of, it's one of the main reasons I like Fire Force so much, because of how simple yet complex the whole situation surrounding Shinra is. He's a big factor into the entire world. I think the mangaka did a fantastic job of displaying that, did a fantastic job of crafting a character like this. And overall, he's just doing great. And the thing is, I do think we're on the near ending of Fire Force, unless we go into a whole another arc or something like that after this, after the Adala arc. So really, I'm super excited to see where Shinra ends as a character. That's the thing. We are in such a good spot right now that with possibly who knows how many chapters left, how much farther can the mangaka take Shinra, how much crazier can things go, and I can't wait. That's the thing. I'm super excited. Can't wait to see what he does. Can't wait to see what he does when he finds out about Arthur and what happened to him. There's so many things that I want to see. Ah. Shinra slaps. I, he's fire. He's great. He's fantastic. That's, that's all I have to say. I was going to make the video a pun. I was just going to say Shinra is fire, but like, there, there are better characters to make that joke with, so we'll definitely get into that. But those are my thoughts on Shinra, his design, everything about him. But I want to hear your thoughts. Please tell me in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Thank you so much for watching once again. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy with a Pencil, writing off.